Hey everyone! In this After Effects tutorial, you'll learn how to create a smooth and dynamic bouncing liquid text animation. It's a fun, beginner-friendly project that's perfect for sharpening your motion design skills. So let's jump right in and get started. All right, let's jump right in. Open After Effects and create a new composition. I'm naming it Liquid Bouncing Text Animation. Set the resolution to Full HD and frame rate to 60 frames per second. Now the first thing we need to do is create the base shape that will form the bounce. Go to the toolbar and select the ellipse tool. Before you draw, make sure your fill is set to a solid color and the stroke is disabled or set to none. For this tutorial, I'm using a white fill. Now while holding the shift key on your keyboard, draw a small circle. Holding shift ensures the circle maintains equal width and height. This shape will act as the main bouncing element in our animation. Rename this shape layer to round shape so that it's easier to organize things later on. But before we animate anything, it's very important to place the anchor point of this shape exactly in the center. If the anchor point is off, the animation will look unnatural. To fix this, right click on the shape layer, go to transform and select center anchor point in layer content. Since we will be using multiple shape layers in this project, it's helpful to make this anchor point centering automatic for any new shape layer you create. To do that, go to Edit, then Preferences, and under the General tab, enable the option that says Center Anchor Point in New Shape Layers. Click OK to apply the setting. Now, whenever you create a new shape, the anchor point will already be centered, saving you time and effort. To animate this layer properly, we first need to hide the shape layer overlays so we can clearly see the circle. You can do this by holding down Control or Command Shift H on your keyboard, which hides the overlays temporarily. Now let's start animating. Make sure your timeline is at the very first frame, then select your shape layer and press P to bring up the position property. Change the Y position value to around 700, which moves the shape down, and then click the stopwatch to add a keyframe. Next, move to the one second mark on your timeline and change the Y position to a lower value, which will move the shape upward to simulate the bounce. Then go to the two second mark and copy the first keyframe from the beginning and paste it at this point to bring the shape back to its original position. This creates a simple bounce animation. Now press the end key on your keyboard at the two second mark to set the end of the work area so the animation only plays within this time range. If you press space bar to preview, you will see a basic bouncing motion. But to make it look more natural and smooth, we need to adjust the keyframes using the graph editor. First, select all the keyframes, then click on the graph editor icon. If your graph doesn't look like mine, right-click inside the graph area and choose Edit Speed Graph. This will show the speed curves. With all keyframes selected, press F9 to easy ease them, which smooths out the motion. Now let's shape the motion to look like a realistic bounce. Select the first keyframe and adjust the curve handles so it slopes steeply upward, giving it an energetic start. Then adjust the middle keyframe to create a dip that reflects the bounce peak. And finally adjust the last keyframe to slope downward like the first. The curve should now resemble a bounce pattern, where the motion starts fast, slows down at the top, and then speeds up again as it returns. Turn on motion blur for this layer. If you do not see the motion blur switch in your timeline, Right-click anywhere on the layer section, go to Columns, and choose Switches to make them visible. Then click the Motion Blur icon for this layer. This will add a smoother, more natural look to the bounce. Now switch back to the main timeline view, and let's add some scale animation to the same shape. Select the shape layer and press S on your keyboard to open the scale property. Go to the first frame and add a keyframe. Move this keyframe to around the half-second mark, then go back to the very first frame and change the scale value to 0%. This creates a scale in effect as the shape grows into view. Now let's make it scale out at the end. Move to around the one and a half second mark and add a keyframe. Then go to the two second mark and set the scale value back to 0%. Now the shape will scale in and then scale out, giving it a nice pop effect. Select all the scale keyframes and press F9 to easy ease them so the animation feels more polished. At this point, I really like how the motion is shaping up. Now press Command plus Shift plus H again to bring back the overlays on the shape layer. You should now be able to see the motion path. 
If the path isn't visible, make sure the shape layer is selected and click on one of the keyframes. You will now see the motion path curve. You can use the bezier handles on this path to adjust its shape, giving the bounce more flow and character. Now when you play the animation, the movement feels more alive and dynamic. Great, now let's add the text to our animation. Go to the toolbar and select the text tool. For this example, I am using the Montserrat font with a size of 166 pixels. Click anywhere on the composition window and start typing your text. However, instead of typing the full word on one layer, we'll be placing each character on a separate layer for better control and animation. For this example, I'm starting with the letter S. Now with the letter selected, let's align it to the center of the composition. Once it's in position, right-click on the layer and choose Pre-Compose. Name the pre-comp letter S and hit OK. Next, move to the first frame of the timeline. Select the letter S pre-comp and press P to open the position property. Add a keyframe there and then move that keyframe to the half second mark. Go back to the first frame and change the Y position to a lower value, such as 380, so that the letter starts from a slightly higher position. This gives the impression of a downward bounce. To create a natural bouncing effect, we'll now use an expression. I've provided a download link to the bounce expression in the description below. Download the file, open it, and copy the entire expression. Then, in After Effects, press and hold the Alt key, or Option on Mac, and click on the stopwatch icon beside the position property. This opens the expression editor. Paste the copied expression into this area and click away to apply it. Now your letter will begin bouncing automatically. If it doesn't look quite right at first, don't worry. You can adjust the timing by moving the position keyframes earlier or later, and that will change how strong or soft the bounce appears. Select only the first keyframe, not the second one, and open the graph editor. Now adjust the curve to create a smooth ease in motion. Just be careful not to change anything else, as it could interfere with the bounce expression and cause it to break. Once that's done, you should see a clean, natural bounce in your animation. Let's take it further by adding another layer of animation. Open the text pre-composition and select the text layer inside. Then go to the Effects and Presets panel and search for CC Lens. Drag and drop the CC Lens effect onto the text layer. Now change the convergence value to 30 and reduce the size to a lower value to begin the animation from a subtle point. Move the Y position of the center point in the CC lens effect so that it aligns with the top of the letter. This will make the lens distortion begin from the top and spread downward. Let's now animate this effect. Reset the view to fit 100% so you can see the whole composition. Make sure you're on the first frame of the timeline, then add a keyframe for the size property of the CC lens effect. Set this initial size value to zero, move forward to around the one second mark, and change the size value to 50. This will create a zoom-like distortion that grows over time and adds extra energy to your text bounce animation. Let's go back to the main timeline and combine both the animations together. I notice the Y position movement on my text layer feels a bit too much, so I'm going to reduce it slightly. Head to the first keyframe and adjust the Y position so that it results in a smaller, more subtle movement. You can, of course, tweak it based on your own design preferences. Now I want to place the letter S layer just beneath the round shape layer. However, since we already added position keyframes, dragging it directly won't work as expected. It'll automatically create a new keyframe. To move it without disturbing the animation, select both position keyframes on the S layer, then hover over one of the keyframes on the layer itself and drag the layer from there. This way, the position gets adjusted visually, but no new keyframes are added, which keeps the animation intact. Now go to the timing where the round shape bounces and position the letter S layer right underneath it, syncing both animations nicely. Now turn on motion blur for the S layer to enhance the bounce and make it more dynamic. All right, it's time to animate the second letter. Instead of duplicating the letter S directly in the timeline, which would share the same source composition, we need to duplicate the composition from the project panel. That way, each letter has its own independent comp, allowing us to make unique changes without affecting the original. Just select the letter S comp in the project window, duplicate, rename it, 
and you're all set to animate the next letter individually. In the timeline, duplicate the letter S comp, then select the letter N in the project and letter S layer in the timeline, and then press and hold the Alt or Option on your keyboard and place this letter N on the letter S comp. This will replace the selected comp with the new one. Open the new letter N composition, change the text from S to N, and switch back to the main timeline. Now we need to position this new letter next to the previous one. As before, press U to reveal all keyframes. Select both keyframes. Then while hovering over any keyframe in the timeline, change the X position value to move the letter horizontally. This avoids adding any new unwanted keyframes. To make the sequence look more interesting, you can also offset this layer by a few frames so the animation appears more dynamic and natural. Now let's duplicate the round shape layer. Select it and press U to reveal its keyframes. Since this layer contains multiple position keyframes, we'll use a more flexible method to adjust its placement. First, create a new null object and name it Shape Position. Then parent the new round shape layer to this null object. Just grab this pick whip and drop it to the Shape Position layer. Open the position of the null object and adjust its values instead of moving the shape layer directly. Because the shape layer is now parented to the null, any changes you make to the null's position will automatically affect the shape layer. Arrange the timing and position of each letter and shape carefully so that it looks like the drop is smoothly transforming into the letter. It might take a little time to get everything aligned perfectly, but I'm sure you'll manage it well. Now for making the shape animation different from the previous one, you can select it and make the changes in the motion path of that shape layer. You can make it different from the previous one and it will have a different look. Just make sure to align the text properly with the shape layer. You can spend some time to match it. Once you're happy with how the transition looks, you can go ahead and complete the rest of the word. The process is the same. Duplicate the composition for each new letter, rename it, replace it in the timeline, adjust the position, and if needed, offset the timing slightly to keep the motion dynamic. To save time, I'm fast forwarding through this step. Once everything looks good, select all the layers, right click, and choose pre-compose. I'm naming this new comp animation. Now align it to the center of the screen and the setup is complete. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you learned something new today. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, good luck and peace.